Welcome to another episode of Real Chemistry, where we are going to name esters. Esters, we can always spot esters by looking at a couple key features. We have a carbon that has two oxygens on it. One is doubly bound, so that's what we're going to call the CO double bond. And one is singly bound, so that's what we're going to call the CO single bond. Those are going to be important terms throughout this video, okay? So notice that special ester functional group has a carbon that's attached to two oxygens, one through a double bond and one through a single bond. Now, so far, that could still be like a carboxylic acid. For example, if we put an H here, that's a carboxylic acid. What's unique about our esters is in addition to having that functional group, we have a carbon chain over here and a carbon chain over here. So we're basically tacking carbon chains onto both sides of this orange functional group. If we want to name an ester, we have to do something kind of unique. We have to split in half the molecule. We're going to split it right through that special functional group that we highlighted before. We want to draw a line through the CO single bond. Notice there's just one line here. We're thinking about the CO single bond to split the ester in two, and we need to make sure both sides still contain an oxygen, okay? So this is that CO single bond that we're talking about, and we want to split the molecule in half right there. So we're going to get a half that I've highlighted there in green, and we'll get a half that I've highlighted here in yellow. Those are the two halves of the molecule. Each one of them is going to give us a part of the name, and that's why it's so important. So this side on the left is going to give us what we will call the base name. It's going to go basically in the base name spot of our molecule. Whereas the one on the right, we're going to see gets a substituent-like name. It's going to have YL at the end, like a methyl group or an ethyl group, and it's going to get tacked on the front as if it were a substituent. So we're basically gonna treat the orange box as if it were a substituent and the yellow box as if it were the base name, okay? Let's go through this step by step. First, split the molecule in two so that we have a C double O bond on one side and a CO bond on the other. Check, we've done that. Count the carbons in each half. Okay, well, in the yellow box, I have one. Sometimes carbons like this confuse people because it looks kind of like a methyl group, but it's just a carbon. It shows a C, so that counts. One, two, three. So three carbons here. All right. On the right hand side, we have one, two. So two carbons there. All right. Now to finish naming it, we want to take the CO side and we want to change the ending to YL. By that, I mean, you want to write down the base name. So for two carbons, we would have ethane, right? And we're going to change that to a YL ending to make it a substituent like name, ethyl. Uh, the ethyl on our ester. So many good names, right? I name all of my kids after chemistry functional groups. Ethyl and ester, those names are okay. But the alcohol group, that seems a little weird. Anyway, we got an ethyl on the right. And now on the left-hand side, we had three carbons. And we're going to want to change the ending for that one to O8. So three carbons gives us propane. And we are going to drop the E and add O8. So it becomes prop and O8, Okay. So this is said kind of like O8, like 2008. So when you think about saying this word, it becomes ethyl propen O8. Like back in 08, something happened. All right, ethyl propen O8. All right, let's do a few more practice problems. Here we got an ester, and we're going to start by splitting the molecule in two. Notice here's our magic bond that we really want to focus on when we split it. And we're going to split it into our orange half and our yellow half. I think I switched the colors, but don't worry about that. We're just going to move on. All right, we're going to count the carbons in each side. On the left-hand side, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So six would give us a hexane. And then on the right-hand side, we have one, two, three, and that would give us a propane. So remember the right-hand side with the CO single bond. So it's not the case that it's, it's not because it's on the right-hand side. It's because it has the CO single bond. We're going to change that one to YL, and it becomes propyl. And then the one with the CO double bond forms our base name, which is hexane. We drop the E, and we make it hexane O8. So that's propyl hexane O8. All right. Now I'm going to play a trick on you. Don't get mad. What is that? Well, still an ester. It's upside down. It's okay, it doesn't change anything, but we do just need to pay careful attention to these instructions now. And doing one that's upside down will force us to make sure we're thinking through those steps carefully. So once again, we have our special bond right here, the carbon single bond, the carbon oxygen single bond. So we're gonna draw a box on this left-hand side and we'll draw a box on this right-hand side. Okay, now we'll count the carbons. 
So we got one, two, three, four, five. So this would be a pentane. And then on the right hand side, we have just one, two. So that would be an ethane. Okay, now here's where you could screw up because it's upside down. We want to grab the CO single bond side, which is the one in orange. Okay, so we're going to take the name in orange because it has the carbon oxygen single bond in it. That's always the one you give the substituent like name to. So it's going to become pentyl, which again sounds like some sort of deranged name. Anyway, ethane, we're going to change to ethano8. There we go, pentyl ethano8. All right, let's do one more in the other direction where we start with the name and go to the formula, and then we'll call it a day. Draw the ester propyl propanoate. Okay, well, you might be able to piece this together by just working backwards and thinking through it, but I've given you a new set of steps here that we can follow. Propyl propanoate, notice both of those are going to have three carbons. Um, so it says, if we follow these steps step by step, it says draw the number of carbons indicated by the O8 ending. Okay, well, the O8 ending is right up here. And the OA ending tells us that we want to have uh, the C double O bond have three carbons. So we're just going to draw our three carbons. One, two, three. All right. And then it says add a CO double bond. And we're going to draw that going up, which might look a little weird. That's okay. We could draw it going down. That would be fine too. So that has three carbons and a C double O bond. And now it says form a CO single bond. So we're just going to go over here to an oxygen. Great. And then it says add the number of carbons indicated by the YL ending. So this is a propyl, so we're going to need three more. One, two, three. So that's ethyl propanoate. And if you really hate how that looks, which I frankly kind of do, because in this case it's more natural to draw the C double O bond going down, we can flip it that way, and that's totally great too. But notice basically the one that ends in O8 uh, is always going to be the one with the C double O bond, and the one that ends in YL is always going to be the one with the C single bond O. Okay, so that's naming esters.